Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to set up YouTube retargeting ads right here inside of your Google Ads account. These are ads where you're gonna be able to retarget people that have gone to your website. Maybe they've gone and seen some of your videos before, but they haven't taken that final action that you're looking for inside of your funnel. Maybe that's a purchase or booking a call or whatever it happens to be. What we wanna do is retarget them on YouTube until they take that action. That's what we're gonna show you how to set up. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over to your Google Ads account. If you don't have a Google Ads account yet, you can go ahead and just search Google Ads credit. And you'll actually get usually a $500 credit to start your Google Ads account. So always good to start off with a little extra money there. And then once you sign up, you're gonna be brought to a page that looks like this. And before we actually create the campaign, there's a few things we need to do first in order to ensure we're targeting the right people and our goals are set up the right way. We're gonna start off by linking our YouTube account. Now, the way we're gonna do this is by going to admin, linked accounts, and then we're gonna to go to YouTube and we're gonna click manage and link. Then what you wanna do is click this blue plus button and then type in the URL for your YouTube channel and it'll walk you through a couple steps to verify that channel and link that account. Now make sure you set the permissions for view counts, remarketing, and engagement. So next, you're gonna to go to tools and then Google tag. And then here is where you're gonna be able to install your Google tag on your website. And Google will either allow you to seamlessly integrate into some major platforms, or you can click install manually and it'll give you a code that you can copy and paste and actually put onto the different headers of your website. Now, if you're working with a developer, they should know exactly how to do this. And of course, Google also has some direct integrations with some of the most popular web hosting platforms. This is as simple as taking this code and just putting it the header of all of your pages. This is a precursor to actually setting up your retargeting because you need to actually capture all the information of everyone who's going on your page to make sure you're gonna be able to actually retarget them for your ads. Once that's all set up, the next step is to go ahead and actually build out your audiences and set your conversions. You can see over here that under Tools Audience Manager, we're gonna be able to actually build out specific audiences. Now there are some that are gonna be pre-built. Now this is our demo account, so there's a few already here. You're typically gonna have all converters, people that have converted from your ads here. You're also gonna have an AdWords optimized list, which might include viewers and converters. And then oftentimes, uh, somewhere here, you're also going to have web visitors as well. Now these are some pre-built audiences that Google will create on your behalf. What we also wanna do is potentially add in some new audiences. So we're gonna click this plus create remarketing list and then we're gonna choose website visitors. And then we can create an audience name. So let's just call this visited website last 90 days. And you can see here, it will pull from the Google tag that you've already set up. And then you can choose who to include inside of this segment. These are gonna be the people that you're actually retargeting this ad in front of. But you can see here that we can target people who are visitors of web pages and we could do a web page visit in the last, let's say 90 days. Now you can do this all the way up to 540 days. However, remember it's only gonna be tracking as you set up this audience and then pre-fill to the last 30 days. So you need to set up these audience buckets sooner rather than later so they can start filling up. It'll go backwards 30 days, but it can go into the future many more days as well. We're gonna get web page visitors in the last 90 days and it's going to pre-fill the segment with people from the last 30 days, and then we can go ahead and click Create Segment. Now we've created a retargeting audience of people that have visited our website in the last 90 days. Now what we can also do is we can create a separate audience of people who have gone to a specific page. And what we can do is go and refine the action down here, and we can have this specifically be opted into our free training. So this is targeting people that have opted into our free training in the last 90 days. And then we click the refine button. See right here, refine action. Page URL contains your um, particular opt-in is. You would put in that as the URL. What it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and include them to that retargeting list. So this will allow you to go and retarget people that land on a particular page. You can take that URL and use that to retarget people. Now, if you have multiple of these URLs, then you could put a or action, you know, or they go on a specific page with another URL. You can do web page visitors last 90 days of any page that contains your site.com slash whatever that URL they go to. It'll pre-fill for the last 30 days and it'll fill up the bucket up to 90. And then we can go ahead and create 
segment. So these are a couple of audience segments we can use for our retargeting ads. Now, what we also wanna do is make sure that you have a goal set up for your final conversion. That way, Google knows when somebody either purchases your products or services or whatever it is you're happening to sell, or people uh, go and maybe book a call or whatever that final step in your funnel is that you want people to take. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the goals tab, and you're gonna go to conversions, and then what we wanna do is go to summary, and then what we're gonna be able to do is add a new conversion goal. So you can see here we have the ability to add a new conversion action. We're gonna click that button and then we're gonna choose website. And then from there, what we can do is you can actually scan your site and it'll go and find specific conversions. Now, you can also set these up manually as well. Um, but you can see down here, it'll kind of grab specific conversions for you or you can add a conversion action manually, which is gonna allow you to set up a goal. Let's say it's a purchase then what you could call this is a purchase, and then you can use a value or decide not to. Track maybe one of these, so only once. And then this will actually go through and give you a specific code that you can use to put on a page anytime somebody has converted. Now you can also use Google's custom wizard to actually go through and set up a conversion specifically using the scan that they do of your site. Either way, what you wanna do is set up that final conversion so that when people go and they purchase or they book a call, Google has all of that information and that data and it's tracking it back. Now we have all of the pieces that we need. The next step is putting those pieces together to actually set up your retargeting ads right here inside of your Google Ads account. We're gonna go and click that big blue plus a new campaign button and that is where we're gonna go ahead and actually create a new retargeting campaign. Now, depending on what this is, you might choose sales or leads. If you're selling a product or you're selling something specifically, you might choose a sales goal. If you're more trying to get, let's say, phone calls booked, uh, which is the example I'm gonna use here, we're gonna do a leads-based conversion objective. Now, you'll see here that it'll actually pull in the conversion goal that you set up previously, and that will automatically optimize towards those goals that you set up inside of your ad account. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and click continue, and we're going to do this as a video campaign because we're setting up YouTube retargeting ads. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and label this. I like to keep the date in there because that uh, allows us to see, okay, when was this campaign created? And then we're gonna call this a retargeting campaign. This is YouTube. We'll have this be web visitors and opt-ins. Right, so you can do a campaign that's just website visitors or a campaign that's just opt-ins. The opt-ins one is gonna convert a little bit better just because these are people that have already gone a little bit deeper into your funnel. You're just bringing them down a little further. And so then from there, we're going to uh, have this be whatever the final action is, which is book a call. Now we're gonna skip over the lead form. That's not what we're doing here. Uh, you know, locations, we're gonna have this be United States, languages, English. For the bid strategy, I always recommend doing target CPA as opposed to maximize conversions. I have other videos where I've talked about this before, but maximize conversions is like giving Google a credit card saying, hey, you have this much to spend per day, spend it regardless regardless of the results. With target CPA, you're kind of telling Google, hey, I wanna get booked calls under a certain cost, and so go get me as many booked calls as you can under this cost, and if you don't think you're able to do it, don't spend all my money. It's like giving a budget to Google, which we've found nine times out of 10 is gonna make sure your campaigns perform better. So Google tells you that you should set your budget at you know like 10X, five to 10X, whatever you set as your target CPA. In general and in practice, we found just having a uh, budget that is equivalent or higher than your target CPA, especially in retargeting ads, is fine. Now, as you wanna scale this, you can add and throw more budget into it. And again, Google's gonna try and get you to spend more here, but we have found in practice when you set it up as a TCPA campaign, you, as long as that budget is equivalent or slightly higher than what your target CPA is, it doesn't negatively impact the campaign. So we can see here that we can go ahead and set it up as a $100 daily budget. So we're trying to get basically one booked call from this uh, per day. So then what we wanna do is we will scroll down. You know, you'll notice that you don't have the ability to change the networks. It is going to run on both YouTube and Google Display, um, but I'll actually show you something you can do shortly. Uh, in just a second that can help you a little bit with that. Now, site links is an opportunity to add a few different site links to your ads. Now, what these site links are are gonna be additional ways for people to interact with your campaign. So you can click new site link and we can have these be a, a couple of book a call site links. Now, these won't always show up in your YouTube ads, but if somebody's on mobile, especially uh, vertical, they might see these site links underneath. So what we wanna do is add these in just as another way for people to be able to book a call. So these are a couple of site links that we can send and the site link for our testimonial page 
that leads back to having people book a call as well. Now we've got a couple of these site links in here. If we click preview, you can see what it'll look like as a YouTube ad on mobile. Now we can go down here to additional settings, and this is where we can actually tweak and change a couple of things. So on devices, we found when you set specific devices, if you turn off TV screens, that's actually gonna help boost your conversions. We just found in practice that that doesn't have the best conversion rates. So typically we'll turn off TVs unless, unless people want specifically uh, that TV advertising, which can work well with retargeting ads. It's just you might not get the direct response conversions that you're looking for. And so then from there, for frequency capping, this is something that is important for us to look at with our retargeting ads. We don't necessarily cap impression frequency because impressions are people who are actually just seeing a little bit of your ad, but they haven't actually fully watched or engaged with that ad. What we wanna do is cap the view frequency, which is people that actually watch your ad for a certain period of time. I like to do a per month and I'll cap it to three views. This still tells Google that I'm trying to get as many impressions as possible, but limit the number of views. And if somebody actually watches the bulk of my ad a few times and they don't take action yet, it might be time for them to see some other retargeting ads or wait a little bit to then pull that back up in front of them. So then from here, what we can do is, we don't really do much with the ad schedule. Third-party measurements, that's a conversation for another time. Now, video enhancements, this is an important one. It takes your long-form video and it basically crops it and shortens it to make it a YouTube short ad. I'm a big believer, like if you wanna run YouTube short ads, create YouTube short ads. Don't you know just let Google auto create it. Maybe in the future, the AI will get better. Right now, this is not the way to go. So you wanna turn this off, allow uh, Google to generate enhanced conversions. It's gonna try and tell you that you, know, you should have this, but in practice, we've just seen these not work that well. So we're gonna turn that off. We're gonna keep the ad group name the same, video conversions and the date. Now in the audience, this is where we're actually going and targeting specifically who we're looking to reach with this ad. So we're gonna click add an audience, and then you can see here, it's, you know, there might be some suggestions, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and click create new audience, and this new audience is going to be our retargeting audience. Normally, you might target in separate campaigns uh, warm audiences, which are visitors, people who view your channel. You know, people that are generally engaged, we call those warm. Whereas hot retargeting is people that have maybe actually opted into your funnel. These are people that are leads, but they just haven't taken that final action yet. In this example, I'll show you how you would set this up as kind of a collective warm and hot campaign. Just know that you might separate these out in practice, especially as you scale. So you can see here in our custom segments, what we can do is we can go and add in those custom segments that we created. Now you'll notice that we have website visitors and inside of here, this is gonna allow us to go and target these audiences that we had set up. And so what we'll be able to do is go ahead and target these people that have visited the page in the last 90 days. Now, it might take a little bit of time for this to actually populate an update. So it might show that you have zero, but that should load as you can as it goes back retroactively and gets the last 30 days of data and then starts collecting more data in the future. And then from there, what we wanna do is potentially add those opt-ins. So we'll look up that opt-ins campaign that we created as well. Now, what we can also do is use some of Google's pre-built audiences. So under website visitors, you'll see that they have existing audiences of all converters. These are people that have converted over a period of time that Google has tracked on their conversion tag or all visitors. These are people that have visited your site. And you can also see that they might have other ones from Google Analytics. And so you can add in really any of these retargeting lists directly into your audience from your existing data and add those into your retargeting campaign. Then what you wanna do is go down here to exclusions and we wanna exclude people that have taken that final action. So in this case, let's have it be a book to call and we can go ahead and go and grab our audience that we've built around people that have booked a call. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and click save. Now, if you also wanna layer this a little bit more in depth, sometimes people will go in and they'll target specific audiences or they'll go and do household income demographics, especially if you have a lot of traffic visiting your site. You can do some of that. We talk about that in some of our other YouTube ad uh, targeting videos, but for now, we're gonna keep this a clean retargeting campaign. Again, you're gonna get to decide who you want to target here. There are so many ways to set up retargeting audiences around people that go to your site. You can literally target people who go to any page on your site or just every page. Whatever that happens to be for you, you can go and set those up. What we're gonna do is go ahead and click save and that's gonna allow us to create that retargeting audience. Now, this is really, really, really important. You have to turn off this next feature, optimized targeting. You can see here, 
that what this is saying is optimized targeting will help you get conversions to, by finding people beyond your selected audience. Well, this is not good for a retargeting campaign because again, this is retargeting people that have already interacted with your site, not people that are brand new. And this is gonna reach people that are brand new. And retargeting ads work really well for your existing audience, but they don't necessarily work as well for people who don't know you yet. You wanna use cold traffic ads to pull people in and then retargeting ads to warm them up. And so now the final piece is to actually just go and set up your YouTube ad itself. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this ad and we're going to paste this video in here. So the YouTube video here. And then what we wanna do is put in what the final URL is. And then it's gonna automatically generate a banner. You can also upload your own custom banner image. And this is what your ad is gonna look like right here. It's gonna play in front of other videos as that retargeting ad. And you can actually preview that ad by clicking preview ad on YouTube. And that'll pull up a YouTube preview video. Test that, make sure it goes to the right link. And it brings people to that strategy page, just like that. And so you wanna just make sure that all that works. You always wanna click that ad, double check. And then down here, if you, let's say you wanted to test a couple different videos, all you gotta do is click this button, click duplicate. It'll create another video, you go to edit, and then you can swap out this video for another video right here. So you can just go and throw a different video ad in there, and that will allow you to test different ad creatives. Once you're done, you're gonna go ahead and click that create campaign button, and that is how you can launch your YouTube retargeting ad to target people who are going to your website, opting in with YouTube retargeting ads. So thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to give it a like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions, happy to answer those as well. If you're looking to have us help you use YouTube ads, to scale your business to that next level, go ahead and book a strategy call. That's what we've been talking about in this video here. Uh, it is just a simple call where we're gonna dive in, understand your business, and map out a game plan for YouTube ads, complimentary call. I'll post that link down there at the top of the description as well. Also, I've got other YouTube tutorials right here on YouTube. So I linked a few of those in a card. I'll link some of them down below and be sure to check out the channel for more tutorial videos on how to set up cold traffic ads on YouTube, how to retarget people who are watching your YouTube videos, and more. I'll see you in the next video.